Okay, so with the model that has the image map, the painted image map, mapped onto it, um, we're going to go ahead and start uh, retopologizing this model and, and actually start building our individual panels on top of this. But before we do that, I want to make sure a couple of things. Number one, let's go to the top view. I want to make sure this is this item is is centered. So. Um, if everything is on zero here, right up here where it says position, I think we're good. If not, set all these numbers to zero and then make sure that the shoe is as centered as we can get it. And by centering it, and you have to be in polygon mode to do this, and just make sure that edge along the uh, top of the toe there is uh, somewhat centered. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just so it's close. And uh, our back might not be lined up perfectly, but that's okay as long as it's close. All right, so I'm going to hit escape a couple of times, drop that tool, move into uh, perspective view here. Now, uh, the other thing I want to do is uh, duplicate this model. I'm, so I'm going to duplicate the item, not, not, not the, uh, the polygon geometry, but the actual item. So I'm going to mouse over it, right click on it to get a drop down menu, and I'm going to go down here to duplicate and just hit the top uh, sub item here and there we go now uh, with that highlighted let's go to hit uh, control G and that's going to put that uh, duplicate item in a group folder I do this uh, just to stay organized and to actually just make a backup copy of uh, any items that I'm going to be doing making a lot of changes on and though we won't be making a lot of changes on the shoe itself it is going to be integral to the to the construction of the shoe panels. So, uh, so I like to have a backup copy of that. So, I'm going to call this backup, and there we go. And I'm just going to move this to the top of the group here. And I'm going to move the camera as well. I like to get these guys out of the way. Camera and lights, just get those guys up there. You can also put these in a group too. They, they're, it's not important that they're that they're out there, uh, but I'll just leave them for now. Now, the next thing we want to do is take the uh, this shell item here and make sure you're in polygon mode and hit Shift D to duplicate. Uh, excuse me, to <laughs> Shift uh, D to divide, and we're going to subdivide this model as a Catmull Clark. I'm going to hit OK, and you can see immediately that there's a lot more polygons on there, and these polygons are um, now. Huh, one thing I forgot to do is just turn off this backup because notice that if it's on, see my wireframes are darker and we want to just turn that off so it doesn't interfere with anything. So, all right, so back to where we were. Um, we, we have a lot more uh, polygons on our geometry now. So when we retopologize, there's a lot more data for that new topology to align itself to. So this is, this is kind of important. So it's... Uh, it's fine if you have a fairly heavy mesh in the background that you're retopologizing. Um, it's just that the new elements that you're creating are not going to have quite as many polygons on them. So, all right, we're almost there. Now, next thing we want to do is uh, set up our viewport to uh, work with topology. In other words, so that it's uh, optimized for the tools that we need for topology. Now we can we can do retopology right here in the Moto tab using the topology pen and the topology toolbox here. Um, we, that's fine. But once again, I like to use the tabs, these switcher tabs up the top, and that just kind of resets the, the whole interface for me, gives me my toolboxes here, so this kind of makes our viewport more optimized for retopology. Okay, so we're going to add a new layer that will uh, allow us to build a uh, new topology on top of this, this existing topology here. So I'm going to go to click Add Mesh, and you can also hit the N key, that will do the same thing. And now look, our background is a lot lighter now there's something missing here what is that that is our image map and we certainly need to use our painted image as a reference to build our panels on otherwise all those steps were for nothing so the first thing we need to do is go ahead and set the uh, shading mode for this viewport to default right there and we still don't see an image 
on here and that's okay then we're going to go to this little gear or cog up here I'm going to move this to the side to pin it and uh, we'll go down here to where it says inactive meshes now I'm on my empty mesh layer right now and the inactive mesh is the one with the shoe on it so I'm going to make this textured and now we can see our image and it's quite dark but uh, that's okay for right now um, and let's see I'm gonna set the wireframe to none and there we go so now I can see the image painted on to the shoe in the while it's in the background and I can work on the foreground part of it here or at least on this empty mesh layer now uh, a lot of times uh, you might think that this is really dark there's a lot of contrast in this image so what I do is I'll go ahead and let's see go over to the images tab here click on the image right there whichever one is active here um, and go down to uh, where it says image still here change that to linear and that should give you uh, a lot lighter or and less contrasty image for that okay now we can work on top of it so that's all we need to do for setting up our viewports and the next step will be to go ahead and model our uh, our panels <music>